Hi, this is Jared Walton with Tom's Hardware, and today I'm going to be doing a teardown of Gigabyte's RTX 3090 Eagle graphics card. This is their high-end offering for now, competing with NVIDIA's RTX 3090 Founders Edition. With that comparison in mind, it's worth noting that this is a substantially smaller card. Not in dimensions, but this card weighs about 1.4 kilograms, while the Founders Edition 3090 weighs 2.2 kilograms. That's a big difference, and it means the Founders Edition probably has a lot better cooling capacity. Still, the RTX 3090 from Gigabyte is likely going to perform just fine. So let's go ahead and check things out. This is the back of the card. Nothing really noteworthy here, though there is the blow-through gap on the right. Here you can see the two 8-pin power connectors, the side view. From the front, there's minimal lighting. The Eagle logo actually doesn't light up. In fact, the Gigabyte logo doesn't light up either. What you actually get is just these two little slash marks that light up. So if you're a big fan of RGB, you know, you'd want something else. If you're not, well... This is the side of the card that faces downward in most cases, and so in that sense, the RGB lighting is mostly superfluous. And we've got three fans, the left fan being slightly smaller. And then let's get back to the reverse of the card. And we've got 11 screws total, I think. I'll have to be careful as we go through this. Um, not sure which ones exactly we need to remove. Obviously, these ones secure to the GPU, and then there's the others that hold the back plate on and secure to the heat sink to provide stability. So let's go ahead and start removing the screws and see how that goes. I'm gonna zip forward here. Um, I actually had a lot of trouble getting this card apart the first time because it wasn't clear which screws needed to come off and how to pull it apart. But the bottom line is basically do all 11 screws on the back here and what you really need to do is remove this last screw up at the top and that will allow you to pull the actual front of the card off. And once you do that, then you can actually get it apart and to remove the back plate, you actually have to remove the heat sink first and then you can get to the remaining three screws that hold on the back plate. You can see that here and we've got it all pulled apart finally. There are a lot of thermal pads here, as you would expect. You know, they got to keep all the chokes and the resistors and capacitors cooled, and you know, it helps to provide stability and link the card up. Once I get this back plate off, a little frustrating, I, I did manage to tear a couple of the, the pads, which, you know, that's no good, but such is life. And uh, let's see, I'm just going to quickly zip through again and we'll pull all of these off. It's you know, it's, it's hard to get it all off, but here you go. Cards all finally fully dismantled. I'm going to take some photos and hopefully you'll be able to get a better view of what's happening. Zooming in on some of the details from my photos, you can see the memory chips on both sides of the PCB. Looks like 10 chokes on the right, and then there's another eight on the left. These help to handle the voltage regulation and circuitry that provides the GPU and memory with power. Usually those are split up into different domains, so they're not all going to the GPU directly. And then you've also got a bunch of capacitors, various other voltage regulators. On the backside, we've got the six SP caps. And, you know, some will say that the MLCC, the multi-layer ceramic capacitors, are better for 3090 in particular. I don't know that it really matters. I did have some instability with the card originally, but the updated drivers from NVIDIA fixed that. And so, you know, the card seems to work fine now and seems to run just as fast as before. But, you know, there's a very small factory overclock on the Gigabyte Eagle card. It has a boost clock of 1725 megahertz compared to the reference model. The Founders Edition has a 1695 megahertz boost clock. And both cards exceed that boost clock by quite a bit, so it's not a massive difference getting that 30 megahertz factory overclock. There's not too much else to see here. I mean, if you're into capacitors and all this other stuff, I'm not an electrical engineer, so I don't have a lot to tell you about what's what. It is interesting to look at the PCB, and it is quite different from what I've seen in the MSI PCB. Like, MSI had triple connectors on their 3080 card, and I assume it'll be 
basically the same card for the 3090 from MSI, just with the extra memory and obviously the more fully enabled GA102 processor. Um, but, you know, Gigabyte here has two little adapter connectors that go to the eight pin power connectors that I had to disconnect earlier. And that's very different from what we saw on other designs. Not much else to say here that you can see the back plate and then I'm just going to go ahead and zip through and put it all back together. So we reverse the process, connect the power cords, got to put the back plate on first and then do these three screws. Once those are back in place, we flip to the main cooler and get that put on connecting the three fan connectors. And then we put all, I believe there's 12 screws here back in and there we go. We are back and we have the original card once more. And I did do some testing. Happy to say that the card still works fine. I put in a little bit of extra thermal paste on the GPU before putting it back together just because I wanted to make sure that there was enough coverage. Nothing really special there, but uh, temperatures don't seem to have changed. So that is your teardown of the Gigabyte card. It's, you know, it's fine. I don't think it's the greatest card design i would actually say given the price differences like you're way better off getting the 3090 founders edition if you could find one in stock which you can't so right now it's like what are you going to buy if you want a 3090 you'll probably take any card or you can wait a month two months maybe even waiting well into 2021 before you'll see a steady supply of the 3090 parts and by that time you know we'll see what big navi from a and b has to offer and we'll see what else is going on but uh right now for a 1500 dollars graphics card this is very much a prosumer level card it doesn't have the titan features that would accelerate some of your professional applications but it does have 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory, which helps in performance for applications like Blender. Like I saw 30% better Blender performance with the 3090 compared to the 3080 and something like 80% to 100% faster than a Titan RTX. So it's definitely a fast card for the right workloads. And if you are a professional user, it might be worth getting this. With the teardown out of the way, I wanted to just go ahead and run through some of the performance metrics you'll see in our full review on Tom's hardware. So I'm going to start with the 4K results and then move on to the 1440p ultra results. 4K, you can basically see it's actually slightly slower than the RTX 3090 Founders Edition, which in turn is quite a bit slower. I mean, 3% slower than the ASUS RTX 3090 Tough Gaming OC. So the ASUS card actually seems to have better cooling and fan speeds and such than the Founders Edition, even though it's a smaller card. The Founders Edition it runs very quietly, though. Like, the fans spin at very low RPMs, so it doesn't go after maximum clocks, but just a rock-solid, stable performance. The Gigabyte, meanwhile, it's, you know, it's consistently just a little bit behind the Founders Edition in a lot of the games. It's like head and some, you know, mar margin of error sort of stuff. And... Either way, you're looking at incremental performance improvements relative to the RTX 3080 Founders Edition. You know, you're paying over twice the cost for slightly better performance. You can go and check out our 3090 FE review for more details on professional application performance where the additional memory and other features of the 3090 might actually become useful. But for gaming purposes, it's going to be a really hard sell getting people to pay $1,500 instead of $700. Again, like that's assuming you could actually buy the cards, but whatever. Running through the rest of the charts, you know, you can see there's nothing really out of the ordinary to discuss. We'll just wrap that up with the performance metrics. Again, you can see these in more detail on palmshardware.com. We'll have the full review up at the same time as this video. And in general, the 3090 is the new king of graphics cards just like the Titan RTX before it, but it's a king that the vast majority of people do not need to pay for and do not necessarily even support. So go ahead and step down one level and get the, I don't know, the court jester, the queen, the second in command, whatever you want to call the 3080. It's the better card, and that's the one that we would recommend for gaming.
Gigabyte's card is decently constructed. There's nothing special about it. You know, you've got a triple fan cooling solution. The middle fan does rotate in the opposite direction of the outside fans so that it reduces turbulence because of the way the air blows through and flows through. Uh, I don't know if that makes a huge difference, but the card generally runs quiet and it, it's reasonably cool. I mean, you know, this is a 350 watt graphics card still. So temperatures are, they, they basically topped out at around 70 degrees Celsius. And at that point, you know, the, the fan speed starts ramping up to help keep the card within bounds. And eventually you get to the point where it might even start ramping down clock speeds as well but you'll still get more than the boost clock is my experience unless you're in a very thermally constrained environment. Again, there's other 3090 cards I think would probably be better. This this is arguably the least or the least impressive at least of the 3090 cards that I've personally seen. You know, again, it's it's not bad, but it's not something that blows you away and says, oh yeah, this is just a super excellent design that they made sure they didn't spare any expenses. I think Gigabyte will have some other 3090 cards that go that route where they, you know, they add better cooling. Maybe they add more RGB lighting. They add some extra features that will potentially be worth your money if you, if you're an enthusiast and you want a better card, but the, the base model, I don't think it's necessarily called their base model, but this Eagle seems to be a pretty tame take on the whole RTX 3090 line. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and we will have additional videos including teardowns of some other 3080 and 3090 cards coming soon. And of course we're looking forward to seeing Big Navi might arrive by the end of the month. So fingers crossed. Take care.